Okay, another update on MAD. Joined by Stefan Everard. Stefan, good morning. Hello, sir. How are we? Marvellous, marvellous. Now, a few months ago, a lot of people would have seen a map uh, of all the sort of stuff like I've got behind me and you've got on your shirts, all the different areas and stuff. But there's a lot of recruitment been going on. And I believe we've hit a moment now that uh, you've got everybody in place. Yeah, that's right. The uh, original map was a bit of a blueprint. It was, uh, it was sort of like a, a loose breakdown of the country and uh, when I was developing my own area I identified there's there's pitfalls within that and they need to be refined so I kind of used that as a template and uh, when the other directors were coming on board I was doing the same thing for them just because they didn't have as much experience as, uh, as, as I did in the conception of the project, if you like, I kind of one of the mm -hmm. original directors that was hired. So I kind of rinsed and repeated for all the uh, directors that Steve was taking on board. I was producing um, maps based on the directive from Steve, which was the county borders, and then breaking that down even further into postcode sectors, which near enough match the county borders. There is, of course, the odd bleed, which you could never help, but uh, mm -hmm. at least by breaking it down into postcode sectors, the, the borders are pretty firm. And so the map altered in shape a little bit, but not by too much. And uh, as a result of these sort of maps being defined and, and it all being proper, people were getting an idea as to what the territories were going to look like and it became easier to recruit the, the directors because they knew exactly which area they would be managing. And I, I volunteered to Steve to, uh, to take that on for him because I had access to software and things to produce maps that I'd done for myself and I produced for other directors as well. And they all seemed yeah. to help their causes in getting on directors. And uh, over the last two or three months or so, we've, seen, we've been through a process and uh, advertised for directors got some really good names interested in and on board and we've hit the pinnacle now we've managed to get all 16 or 17 really because there's two in in north scotland where the area is so vast but yeah we've got a great bunch of like-minded people all on the all on the same team we're all in one big chat and we're bouncing ideas off each <laughs> other and, and how to improve things and it's it's good now we're all there we can really start to motor just just explain then you say 16 i mean there's all this behind us as well 16 what 16 directors that, that are running a region or an area of the UK that you and others, which is, I think is brilliant, have created. Yes, so I'm one of 16. I cover the southeast of England. There's 15 equivalents throughout the country as per the uh, map that was originally published. That's yes, now yes. a little bit refined. Within each of those are 16 smaller, well, there will be eventually once everybody's got all their uh, 16. So in all, 256 micro regions throughout Great Britain. So you're drilling um, right down to, to everybody's locality? Yes, well, well the, within reason, of course, yeah, some will be bigger than others based on population density, etc, etc. But uh, yeah, we hope to be sort of a fairly even spread nationwide and uh, there'll be 256 of those, if you like, within 16 regions and each of those are headed up by 16 of people like myself. Once this all gets going, that that's an immense machine that uh, that uh, there must be thousands and thousands of dart players that sit in all these little little regions. So as well as you being a director of the the, the sort of super region, the sixty ones, lots of other regional directors coming on board as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it'd be an impossible task for for, for one person who's covering eight counties to mm -hmm. harness every single dart player and uh, and and look after to them. So by drilling it down into sixteen people, not only they've got the advantage of knowing the area more. So uh, typically, we would look to recruit those that are influencers or highly respected within in the local scene, so they can really sell the product on my behalf and uh, adapt it to the expectations and the traditions of that region so it doesn't have to be static nationwide yeah so so when you say you know uh, how you would they're, they're sort of doing it on your behalf if they're watching now what are you selling as part of this this whole thing this mad thing i sort of get an understanding but how, from your perspective what are we selling here so it's basically making amateur darts more relevant than it ever has been. There's always been an amateur dart scene with uh, like from the very beginnings of the BDO right until its unfortunate demise. There's been a developing professional scene in the last 20 years, but even the original amateur scene was still um, partially elitist in the sense that there was a channel to go through. It wasn't as open as it could be. Right. But of course, there's thousands of domestic local leagues running in the local pubs and clubs throughout the country. Lots and lots of dart players. They are the proper grassroots. Mm. And now this product is catering for them all at last. From the very, very beginner dart player, you can make that 
pathway all the way to the professional scene without having to take a sort of a semi leap of faith first. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a gamble, sort of having to. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you were to, to compete and get to the top of the amateur scene, you would have to um, go to the Super League, you would have to try and play for your county, you would have to do the BDO tour. I mean, I've, I've done a couple of events myself. They get quite, I mean, I was never a competitor, if you like, so I never was never sponsored, but I used to go for the weekend and it could get pretty expensive. And what you got in return really would never make it never make you a professional dart player you would then have to go to the next level which is a hell of a lot tougher to, to crack yeah so the 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 pathway from from steve's dynamic of pub to pro was very very milestone uh, based and there was no bridges involved you took a leap and if you didn't make it you fell <laughs> uh, and now you don't have to do it that way anymore yeah. and you never fall too far it's, it's, a, it's a lot more smaller steps than a few bigger steps if you like great hope for us all um absolutely yes <laughs> so might even get them back out myself yeah yeah absolutely so are all these people that you're working with now the the super regional directors your regional directors and those within all those communities are they all dark players or are you actually finding people that are perhaps i don't know run events uh, have i don't know big venues that they want to fill or or is it just generally people that really care about the the, the game it's a, a mixture of everything, really. I think for looking at my own area as an example, and my, I was I was a dart player who took an interest in, in running competitions, so I'm a competition organiser, if hmm. you like. Um, other players are very, very... Other, sorry, other people that I've got are very, very keen players. They go everywhere and they know how competitions should be run and how organisations should be run, so they're trying their hand for the first time. You've got other people who haven't picked up a dart for years but know how events work and, and how organisation works, and there's those. You've got those that are, are borderline professional, so we've got the likes of I've got Aaron Turner, for example, who's who's done it all, and uh, yeah, we spoke to Aaron. And, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. So he's, and then we've also got uh, one of my regional manage, regional directors is is Tom Cousins. He's Steve's manager, as it happens. Yeah, he's uh, he's into sort of player management and uh, and exhibition type stuff. So uh, is it the whole the whole plethora, the whole spectrum of people involved? Anybody who's passionate, really, about the sport in general, be it in whatever arena, player, manager, whatever. Um, would be welcome to, to to be a regional director. So anybody with passion is the main ingredient. What a team! What a team of of people! And I just think it's so refreshing. I've, I've mentioned this before. How all these people that are getting together are just completely uh, writing the book again of of how uh, somebody can pick up three bits of tungsten and have a go and make it all the way through to the top. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Also, I believe there's a bit of professional recognition coming as well from players that are uh, on the tour and um, I don't know, like the likes of sort of Glenn Durant and people like that. Uh, um, so it's starting to make a few noises. I appreciate you can't get going just yet because of what's going on, but but start to make some noises. Yeah. Um... The professionals, of course, they've all come from amateur backgrounds. Everybody does. You don't just leap straight into a professional game. So they, they know how the grassroots work and the, they've all endured the same challenges that these thousands and thousands of players also endure. Of course, only the select few ever make it. Yeah. So they fully appreciate a rejuvenation of the amateur scene because all it's going to do in the long run is strengthen the professional scene. Yeah, yeah. But they're worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I imagine they probably are. But they're all humble as well. I mean, I've, I've had you know, quotes from Keegan Brown, Luke Humphreys, all these youngsters that have, are now making it into the towards the peaks of their career, and they they've gone from the ground up. So they they fully appreciate an amateur system. They're all right behind it, and uh, I, don't, I don't see why any professional wouldn't be really. Hugely exciting, and I know as we speak at the end, uh, coming to the end of November, uh, I appreciate there's some very exciting news coming up uh, for Mad in um, December. But we'll we'll leave that to the to the man himself to probably talk about that, um, uh, which is very exciting. Um, but uh, for those that want to get involved, then um, Stefan, uh, just just can they can they email anybody? Can they look at a website? Can they? Is there any sort of way of getting involved if they want? Or are you all done and we don't need any directors at all? No, no, the people uh, will soon. There'll be a big campaign to try and get membership because uh, okay. we're we're obviously waiting for the, uh, the the website to be fully published. And uh, as Steve's tweeted recently, we've got a, a live launch coming up in a, a few weeks' time in December. So that will um, be quite revealing for for the future yes. of Mad and, and what's going to be happening. Very, very full scene we're going to have now. And um, yeah, as soon as that's ready to go, people can start uh, registering their, their, their membership and um, the system can really start to, to motive. What was important is that we did have 
people in place first because we do want to be live in half the country and not the other so uh the fact that we've got everybody in place now is a real real big step for for mad and uh and it's upcoming uh, membership um but if they want to get involved literally anybody can so they just need to play in a or sign up to a league that's mad registered and it doesn't have to be a specific mad league it can be if the director wants to create one but all the leagues that are currently existing have the option to sign up to mad and if they do you can become a member and be part into the system even if you don't do league darts you want to do event darts you can sign local up in events business. and competitions that's right yeah local competitions that have always existed that will still continue to pop up now they can apply to be mad affiliated as well and you can gain points that way and, and play on the event side and uh, of course we've got some some big stuff coming up soon which is uh, yeah. another, another arm to the to to the mad product product just sounds brilliant um i just thought it was worth having a, a chat about this because we've had some reasonable news that potentially you know um, next year will be a little better um and um I guess, um, how have you found it, you know, because I'm, a, you've had to do all this via probably, I don't know, how many emails, video calls, uh, all sorts of stuff, because you can't really go and meet anybody, can you? So it must have been no. really quite tough this last couple of months and to get it all together. It's, I mean, there's some people I felt like I've known for years, but I've never actually met them face to face, yourself being one of them. Um, but it's, it's, it's the way things are, yeah, that's right. but it seems to be the way things are done. And I, and I think as people have got used to it, it, it may be the way going forward as well. If lots more can be achieved by, by sitting at home for a day and making calls and, uh, and sending emails, and you achieve a lot more than being out on the road. And I think if this was done the old school way where it was all face to face meetings, we'd be months behind. It'd be much behind. So I'm, yeah. I'm certainly certainly not against this way of working. Yeah, I think uh, absolutely. Administrative wise, organising and stuff like that, great. Um, but I would imagine all the people just can't wait to get on a hockey and have a game with somebody. I yeah, I I think now we we were at a place where we just want to get started. I think um, yeah, the leagues and the teams they want to get back going. I, I'm certainly a huge fan competitions again. I was doing 50 or 60 a year and of wow. the amount I've done this year I can only do it you can count on one hand so um, yeah I kind of want to get my eye back in and then get it all mad affiliated and uh, and really see how the rejuvenation of the scene um, comes forth and uh, what the vibe is like and uh, be well, just, just for the record because it'll be on YouTube forever I'm sure we are going to sit here and say 2021 is going to be amazing. <laughs> yes, hope it is. Let's hope it is. Yes, definitely. Because we worked hard enough for it. So absolutely, uh, Stefan Everard, your work has been immense over the last few months, and thank you so much for doing that on behalf of of Steve Brown and Mad. Um, it, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to see you organizing but in a, such a refreshing way rather than a dictatorial blazer brigade. You've got everybody working together and all from the the very grassroots, which is what it's all about absolutely we've all, we've all been there uh, we know how hard it is let's just pull together as a team and, and and get it done magic stefan thank you very much for joining us